All right, welcome back to Lamentations of Elemental Evil. I think we're on session 28. Uh, let me get some background music going on here. Okay, last session, uh, party basically finished exploring the inn, got into a fight with some, quote, mosquito bats, and I realized I forgot to ask Midjourney to give me an image of what they look like. There you go. Um, and, um, whoop, wrong, wrong button. There we go. And then, uh, I think you guys basically rested overnight and then investigated the chapel and found nothing. Uh, as part of your victory of fighting the mosquito bats in the, uh, attic storage area, you found a significant amount of treasure. So that is sort of where we are. The treasure is loaded up onto the, the wagons. It's, uh, we'll say mid-morning the following day. And Hans is looking at that statue at the center of this uh, complex, wondering what to do next. So what are you guys going to do next? We also haven't been in the stable yet. I don't know if we want to look there before checking out the statue or not. It might be worth it. There might still be horses there. Oh. I'm down well, for a uh, quick search. If, if we can determine how these things died, maybe. Like, if they got bat, if they got bat bites on them, like all of them, then we'll know that it was the bats coming out and killing everything under the sun. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because if you, if you know that, then we can be fairly confident that uh, <laughs> whatever happened to them won't happen to us in the stable, as your point. How did the tiny bats dump a big pile of bodies in the same place? Well, because yeah. they'd be coming out of the building right there on that corner up there, right? And if anybody was coming out, they'd kill them? I don't know. Did we see That's what I'm saying. If we could get a hold of a body from a distance and kind of pull it out and see what's up with it. Does I totally know how a kill zone works. That looks like a kill zone. If, you, if you're running from predators, you run in different directions. Oh, I thought they were placed the there. There's no flies or birds or bugs in that area either, so that I think the bugs would be too small for the mosquito bats to get. Question. Would I be able to make a hunting rule to capture a small woodland creature like a squirrel or a mole? Uh, yeah, you could go hunting. Uh, and I would, I would allow that role to kind of, you'll be gone for a little while. Alright, is it in character or not for Gilbert to tell you guys? Well, that's up to you. Um, in that case, he'll think, I know, a rare thing, Gilbert thinking, but he'll like ponder it, get an idea in his head and go, hold on a moment or two, I'll be back soon. And, uh, without saying another word, just avoiding the kill zone, uh, going off into the bushes to see if he can find a small woodland creature. Firing away. He does not. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, um, you. Well, how much time did you want to spend? Like an hour? Um. Yeah, half hour, hour. Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, how about this? I'll. We'll, we'll do a little negotiating. OSR style. Um, if you want to take like 15, you know, like a turn or two, you'll just come back with nothing. But if you want to uh, take an hour away from the party, kind of on your own out in the woods, we'll fail forward. But you're gone for a, quite a while. That is fair by me, because then they can still do stuff in the intermediate. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, I also love both both the humor and or the horror of him coming back with like brambles in his hair with a living critter and either everyone's dead or everyone's just hauling out the loot. What did I miss? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess we're friends now. Put on shoulder, walk away. <laughs> okay, uh, just do me a favor uh, there, Gilbert. Roll a d6 for me. Uh, that would be an encounter, right? We'll see. Say. That would be a four. Okay. All right. So uh, 
Gilbert Knight uh, wanders off into the woods, um, and as is his, uh, I guess, nature, he stops momentarily right before he disappears into the gloom, uh, light kind of cascading over his flowing blonde locks, and then off he goes. Oh, yeah, and he kind of looks, nods, and then disappears. And um, all right, so what are the rest of you doing? You want to... Never to be seen again. <laughs> Well, let's see what uh, what uh, creature jumps out of the woodworks and goes booga booga is. <laughs> I'm down for checking the stable or uh, trying to recover a body from this pile. Yeah, I'll try to hook a body from eight feet away with the pole arm. Okay. Yeah, it's not that difficult. Um, um, Snag him by the clavicle. <laughs> why don't you make a strength strength roll here? The bodies are in various stages of decay. It's, it stinks. Okay. Yeah, you're able to uh, grab one that um, is relatively not uh, relatively new, but not so new it's going to um, cause you to vomit all over the place as it, you know, is decaying. And um, uh, you're able to also pull it without... Um, inadvertently tearing it apart um, given its state of decay so yeah you grab uh, what appears to be um, potentially a, uh, a wanderer a traveler maybe made his way his or her way uh, to this location maybe to rest who knows but it's, it's human and um, uh, investigating the body a little bit further uh, it's covered in puncture holes And there's, uh, uh, aside from, like, the typical, what I guess would be typical, you know, uh, decaying ooze or whatever that's left behind as a body is uh, decomposing, you do know there's, you're not really seeing anything that looks like dried blood. Uh, so, so the totally not trademark mosquito bats killed all these people, but it still doesn't explain how they got dumped here in the big pile. Maybe that's where they were dumping their stuff. Yeah, but they're, they're small. I wonder if there's something like some charm effect on the statue and people just uh, get enthralled to it and stare at it. Then the mosquito bats just come and eat them since they aren't moving anyway. Well, we could check another body, see if it's the same way, you know? Okay. Is that the plan? That sounds good to me. Okay. Let's make another strength check here. Whoever's hooking the body. I think that's mm -hmm. below your strength, right, Bees? I think yeah, I yeah, my strength's a 10. Gotcha, yeah. Say, similar, you're able to find one that's, and it, uh, uh, while there is some tearing, um, uh, the body remains intact and uh, uh, to make it easy to um, investigate. Same thing. This one happens to be uh, an orc. Uh, you don't see any the, any indication of its of that weird greenish blood that it had that these orcs have, um, and it's covered in puncture wounds. So I think it was it is the bats that were doing the killing, but we don't know why people were staying here. So I don't know. I could cast detect evil tomorrow, <laughs> but as far as today, maybe we just sneak up to it. Yeah, I would say. Uh... If anybody approaches, just have them like uh, tie a rope around their waist, and so if uh, something happens, we can drag them away from it at least. Hey, why don't we find some oil and throw a whole bunch of oil on these bodies and set them all on fire first? Yeah, let's go gather up some faggots from the woods and 
throw those onto the corpses and any any loose brush and then fire them up. Okay. Say that takes about ten to twenty minutes. Um, Hans, roll a d6 for me. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you are able to basically get this little bonfire started. It's gonna burn for a while. Let's see. Get the take a look at the map here. Yeah, that's about one, two, like twenty, forty, five di uh, diameter. That's a, <laughs> so that's 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 gonna burn for a while. Yeah, while well, that's burning, if nothing goes up, like you know erupts out of the flames or whatever um, we'll check up the stables I guess okay all right so um, another edge just sort of watching it burn for a few minutes nothing comes out um, I mean it stinks bad um, but uh, nothing nothing pops out of the the, the burn uh, the, the, the flames nothing erupts out it's just a bunch of burning bodies and when you head on over to the stable, uh, this will be about an hour later, and um, we'll say, Gilbert, yeah, you were, nothing happened, nothing bad happened, no, no creature jumped out at you. You have yourself a squirrel, and uh, you emerge from the, the tree line seeing... A large bonfire and the group starting to head towards the stable. I've returned with a squirrel. Do we know how the statue killed people yet? Because I can toss the squirrel and see if it dies within moments. Yeah, wait for the fire to calm down and then we can check it out with the squirrel. Oh yeah, it is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, Gilbert will just uh, stand there, uh, stroking the animal's head. Stroking what? You cut out. Uh, the squirrel, the animal. Oh. Which head did you think he was stroking? I don't care what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> and... you just, look, the guy's dumb, but he's not just gonna start whipping it out just in broad daylight, dumb. You know? <laughs> gonna call him Mr. Winky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monster. And now this is a PETA Finder General sketch. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, uh, when you guys get to the stable, um, it's uh, empty uh, other than uh, five desiccated corpses uh, of uh, horses, just desiccated uh, horse bodies. Um, uh, it looks like they... Uh, had been tied to the stable, you know, and um, uh, the feed bags are empty, and uh, one looked like it may have broken its neck trying to, like, uh, panic and, you know, trying to, like, pull its um, uh, pull itself free from where uh, the, the, the bar it was tied to, right? Some of them, uh, the, the wood is shattered as they tried to break free, but they're also filled with puncture holes. Ugh. And there's no blood, but they have full tack harness. I mean, weathered with age. It looks like they've been here for some time, but they're not. Um... There's no meat. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's yeah. There's it's. Uh, I really don't know what stage of decomposition, or what like the appropriate scientific name is, but it. They've been here for a while, but. Uh, there's still like skin, you know what I mean? The you could tell like the color of the horse, that you know that kind of thing. If you like really tried, if you really wanted to figure it out, but uh, filled with puncture holes and uh, just sitting here rotting. Yeah. What's this uh, stable place look like? Like walls, any piles of hay, anything uh, buried in piles of hay? 
uh, spending some time going through the place, you don't really find anything. Um, anything in the rafters? <clears throat> nothing. Nothing. It's dark. It's old wood. Relatively clean, aside from the fact that it's been sitting around for a while. Animals may have come in here um, at some point, but um, us other than the, the horse... Uh, the horses here um, but again you don't really see any insects you know I mean it's uh, while there are stable doors there are you know windows that are open uh, smashed glass that sort of thing but nothing of of value I'll go out and watch the fire burn down I think our next move is the squirrel. That sounds promising. In that case, uh, the fire is burnt down. Uh, I'm I'm actually googling. See how long this would actually take. How long does it take to burn seventy-five human humanoid <laughs> bodies? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen this map done uh, with the high in crematorium of modern technology, 45 minutes at least. <laughs> All right. But in a medieval a fantasy. And throwing more on top of it makes it longer. All right. So I'm going to say uh, it's going to burn for a greater, uh, longer part of the day here. Um, so. Yeah, they're missing the key component that actually speeds up uh, incineration, and that's fat. <laughs> ah, that is, yep. Some of them do. Some of them, some of the orcs are relatively fresh. Um, okay, um, so I need uh, Franz and Gilbert each to roll a d6 for me. No, not one, not one, not one. <laughs> On a d6 roll? Roll, uh, <laughs> roll another, <laughs> roll another d6 for me, please. The squirrels are, the other squirrels are coming out of the woodworks and the squirrels are angry. Nope, six bears. Okay, roll a d6 for me. Three. Okay. Roll a percentile dice, please. Yeah, this is gonna sting. Sixty. Okay. And let's see. All right. Roll another D six. Now, roll a, okay, roll a d6. Rolls today. One. Okay, interesting. All right, so you guys, uh, where would you be located as you're sort of watching uh, the fire? Uh, on, like, the side of the bonfire that is where you're, um, where the well is in your carts. I was between the stables and the bonfire. Oh, you yeah, wanted? That... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I figured that'd be quite fair. Okay, so you're you're hanging out by the stables. Okay. All right. Um... Okay. No, we're gonna lose an ox. Got the wizard guarding the ox. Okay. 
what uh, your treasure would be in the battle wagon, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Eight. Just double checking a couple more rolls here. Oh man. We're about to get treasure relocated. Okay. All right. Um, over the sound of the flames, uh, and you start to hear um, the jingling of the tack on your oxen and a couple of uh, harumphs. Okay. And uh, <coughs> you really can't see anything because of all the smoke. Um, but what would you like to do? based on that information because they're on the opposite side of the smoke run towards our loot <laughs> yep <laughs> yep I'll head to the end get my bow out I'm getting carjacked <laughs> Dilbert put the squirrel away draw his weapons and uh, follow towards the uh, the um, uh, loot cart okay Ooh. They're running. I should run too. Right, as you kind of around your way, make your way around uh, the big bonfire here, um, you see uh, a human in chainmail, battle axe, sort of strapped onto his back. Um, uh, he doesn't seem to see you at this point, just yet, anyway. Uh, and his he's like leaning into your battle wagon, rummaging around for stuff. And uh, uh, he's got his hands on, on the reins to try to, in an effort to keep the ox, uh, oxen from moving as he's, like, rummaging around. I'll, uh, I'll greet him with an arrow. Okay. I'm going to take a shot. Um, I, I will let you know there is a chance you hit the the oxen. Slim, slim chance. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You guys have surprise, basically. So if you guys want to uh, do something, can I, can I run with my pole arm and do the sticky sticky dismount thing with the hook? The 19 hits there, Gar, um, and that will be, and it'll hit him, and uh, okay. yes, Franz, you can do that, so roll your damage, Gar. What? All right, it grazes his shoulder, and he cries out in pain, and uh, he looks in your direction in horror. As he's crying out in pain, and as Franz is doing the sticky, sticky, whatever it was, uh, Gilbert will uh, rush in and take a swing with his sword. He might just be looking for food. True, but does Gilbert know that? All right. <laughs> All right, Franz, that's a miss. That's a miss. Yeah, Gilbert, you swing. He's backpedaling um, as, as you guys are swinging wildly. Uh, Kaitho and Hans, you bum rushing this guy? Yeah, um, I'm. Uh, as we're charging forward, I'm gonna look uh, kind of in the forest uh, behind uh, the well, and also see uh, if I can see movement in the bushes to the south of the road. See if there's anybody else we might have missed. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, you don't see anything. 
I'd like to make a. Okay. Yeah, no, you don't see anything. Nothing, no, no movement anyway. All right, I guess I'll try uh, to great axe then. <laughs> I'm just gonna holler at him, throw down his arms, and stop. Uh, Kaito, as you swing with your uh, great axe, you know, this guy is definitely scared out of his mind, but, uh, and, he, and he's uh, continues to backpedal, uh, but your great axe swing does not find purchase. So you miss. And... Uh, Alright, top of the round. Um, with... Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, he immediately drops to the ground, tosses his axe, puts his hands up. Well, hey, hey, easy, easy. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to steal anything. Then what were you doing? I was just looking for food. <laughs> I'll, I'll check the wagon and see, uh, see what kind of stuff he had been pulling out. <laughs> Why didn't you just ask us for food? I didn't, I figured, um, you guys, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know. I've heard a lot of strange things about the road to Hamlet and, uh, like what? people disappearing, wagons getting taken. I figured this was just abandoned. Uh, and Kaitho, yeah, he, he, he definitely found your treasure and he was, uh, you know, taking a look at it. <laughs> Didn't uh, you didn't pocket anything that might not have been yours, did you? Uh, he tells you, most certainly not, sir. Gilbert will check his pockets to make sure. Uh, you do find that he is carrying a hundred silver pieces. I toss that back to Clayto and uh, smack the thief upside the head. He's like, wait, that that was mine. That's mine. I look over to Clayton. Was that kind of his? Money. Why were you Why were you looking for food if you could afford it? It's like I have been traveling from the northern kingdoms of Burn uh, for weeks. I'm out of food. I'm hungry. Do you have any? And can I please have my money back? Mm. I'll go in and uh, count uh, all of the treasure and see if there's anything missing. Okay. Um. After, I'll say, about 10 minutes of carefully taking a look, um, uh, taking a look at the treasure, it doesn't look like anything's missing. He definitely was counting some of it, quickly counting it. You could tell he was, you know, moving some of the uh, silver out. He hadn't found the, the gold pieces yet, um, but it doesn't look like anything's missing based on your original counting. All right, I want to walk up to this guy and poke him with my bow. Check out, check out his shoes, his legs, his chest piece. I'm going to snap a mushroom off my shoulder and uh, put my hand forward. All right, he is uh, absolutely terrified of you um, as you are doing all of this. And he's like, um, you know, by the powers. <laughs> the powers of what? You, you travel with, with the Fey. Uh, and he's like keeping an eye on both you and uh, Gar and Kaitho. Um, and he's like, what, what do you want? What, what does this shroom do? You going to try to uh, enchant me? No, no. You ask for food. This is food. A whole day's worth. And I'll nod and raise it up to him. Right, roll 2d6 for him and add your charisma. If you have any modifiers. Nope. Uh, he, he 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 adamantly refuses. I'm not going to eat anything, any mushroom from the Fey. You think I'm crazy? Can't be that hungry um, then. Um, he generated five mushrooms, right? No, I had two for my my last roll. All right. Hmm. Do you want to eat? Him. Do you want to eat this one? And I'll snap um, the other one off my uh, groin. <laughs> Well, obviously Gilbert's not going to eat it now. I was thinking oh, that he no, would no, no, show the, the food is safe and then be like, just trust him and take the food. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can take this one. One of I'll the not-groin mushrooms, uh, Gilbert will 
clearly pop in his mouth and eat. <laughs> See, Griffith good for eating. Just take the mushroom. He says, um, how do I know you aren't uh, some part of some sort of strange uh, elf cult? And he's well, I I buy, eyeballing Kytho. <laughs> um, Gilbert will think about it for a second. Hmm. I don't think we are an elf cult. I don't think so, at least. I tell him if it makes you feel any better, it can be blessed by an Inquisitor of Arn. But it really doesn't matter, does it? You're hungry or you're not. I, I would love some food and my money back. And I swear I will go on my we way. We give him back his money. He snatches it. I'll snap the thigh shroom off and hand it to him. One sec, one sec. <laughs> Keep playing, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, no worries. Um, he again refuses. He's not gonna take. He's not gonna take the uh, the mushrooms from your uh, from your body, there, Gar. <laughs> I'll put it. I'll put it in my pouch. Very well. You guys want? You guys still have like fifty-seven uh, portion rations left. Yeah, I'll we'll give him some rations out of the wagon. Okay. How many days worth? Just one, two, three. And then three to make it back to town. He uh, he immediately like takes a bite out of like some bread, you know, and just starts woofing some of it down. And, and uh, he thanks you, and he says, uh, uh, "I'll leave you be. I'll leave you be." Um, and uh, as he starts to kind of head down the trail, um, away from the inn, um, he stops and looks back and says, "I've I've heard uh, I've heard things about you, Arn." Arn, Arnish folk. Uh, I'm glad to know that they're wrong, and and he waves and continues heading 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 south, I guess, uh, towards Hamlet. Uh, wait a moment, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, there's a, a plaque on the statue in the center of the fire, and and after the fire burns down, we were wondering if you could help us translate it. Um, roll 2d6 and add any charisma modifiers. Oh, see what my charisma is. Oh, I have a 10, so nothing special there. Okay. He says, uh, I can do that. Um, I can keep the food, though, right? Yeah, he can keep his food. All right, all right. He he kind of walks uh, towards the um, the chapel uh, near near a tree. Kind of hunkers down and, and finishes his bread while he w waits for the fire to go down, and he kind of keeps an eye on all of you while he does this. Then, after another, we'll say, hour or two, we're, we're about hitting midday here. Uh, the fire is burned down enough where um, it's really just smoldering ash and bone. And, uh, you know, the, woods, the wood that you had tossed down there as well is mostly ash. Still giving off a little bit of heat. get up and uh, make his way over to this uh, statue and uh, he uh, basically says uh, ah yes this is uh, written in uh, high uh High Verbanese uh, must have been a noble who owns the who owned this uh, place. Uh, it just simply says Garvin Rickrom or Richrom. Garvin Richrom must be the name of the the, the guy on the on the statue. And he just kind of looks at you, Hans, and says, "Can I go now?" Sure. Thank you. All right. He takes off at a near run. 
Ah, I'll push the statue down and start tapping around the base with the, the butt of the pole arm. Tapping it, extending up and hitting the statue and seeing if it's hollow. And then start looking for any uh, scratch marks on the granite or on the cobblestone around it. To see if it can move, pivot, or anything like that. Okay. Give me a second here. All right, you start doing your. Uh... Is anybody joining him? I watch from the trees. Yeah, I help him. Okay. Kaifa. I'm gonna hang back as well. All right. Hey, Gilbert, are you back? You gonna join I them? Am. What are the options? Uh, hang back or join uh, Franz and Hans. Uh, as they tap around the base of the statue. As we oh. pump you up. <laughs> pump me up? What? <laughs> oh, the base of the statue. I get it. It's a dong. Um, but they are close to it, right? They're not immediately dying the second they go there. Oh, yeah. The They're... guy went there, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. In that case, uh, before anything, Gilbert's going to take out the squirrel. Looks like I'm going to have to train you for a pet now that we don't have to kill you. Put him back in. And, uh, let's see here. Will will he hang back? He'll probably help his buddies, truth be told. Okay, so the three of you, um, very good. All right, um... <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so the, um... Tapping around, um, nothing around the base seems to be loose. Um, and uh, if you're looking for, you're looking for like scratch marks, I think that maybe if they did exist, it would be very difficult to find them, almost impossible with all the ash um, and, and scorch marks from the fire. Would it be at least a one in six chance? Um, no, I'm going to say it's impossible. Let's just try to pivot it. Yeah, we grab corners and try to move it. Oh, it is, uh, seems pretty solid. Um, it's not moving. All right, well, then I'll climb up on the statue and see if there's any uh, pressure points, like with the nameplate, see if it pivots, the pushes in, and then climb up on the statue and see if there's a... Uh, any uh, indication that like part of the statue might move like an arm or a digit or something okay um yeah when you uh poke the uh the plaque um uh, it immediately moves inwards and part of the marble base actually swings open and when that happens uh a large uh cloud of gas comes out about a 20 foot radius and I need the three how they died. and I need the three of you to make saving throws versus poison alright oh shit okay. oh yeah when, how they died. and when the plaque or I'm sorry the door opens it makes like this uh, kind of like a high pitched uh, squeaking sound from the from the, the, the hinges I'm going to be spending a luck point on that, just heads up. Okay. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> I guess we all are spending a luck point. And my lucky dagger, did it not work today? Oh, well, you still have the, uh, the, 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 the roll of 11. Five. He's done for. I don't think 11 will save me, though. I don't, Make I don't, a save! I don't know what poison save is. You know? And uh, someone roll for the squirrel. <laughs> Okay, you're a specialist. You're... I didn't write it down. What was I thinking? Really? Oh my uh, goodness. 16. Well, that probably makes it. Here, I'll take a quick look for the specialist. Um, yeah, 16. Or... So, uh, Franz and Gilbert, uh, you both sort of, um, and as does the squirrel, apparently. Um, <laughs> yawn. Oh, you're, not, you're not seeing if it's uh, save is done yet. <laughs> Uh, Yawn and uh, the uh, uh, Franz, Gilbert, and the squirrel 
collapse uh, in sleep. Uh, Hans, yeah, you feel like just a wave of exhaustion as you're breathing in this gas and your eyelids get heavy, and um, but you're able to kind of shake it off. And with that, um, accompanying that squeak from the um, hinges on the uh, door. When you save B16? Who's? Um, Franz's. Wouldn't he make his save at 16? Yeah, but I, made it, I wrote a 14. Ah, pardon me. Never mind. Yeah. Um, let's see. Give me a second here. Yeah. Um, let's have Franz roll a 1d10 for me. Uh, and um, nine mosquito bats uh, come out of the roof of the inn and start heading your way. <laughs> Holy crap, I thought we killed all of them. <laughs> I wonder if there's another uh, another room in the attic or something we didn't get to. Okay. Can you do the thing? Yeah, my spells are recharged. So. All right. Oh, give me a second. I'm just rolling some uh, hit points here. Wow. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is hit Gilbert in the side of the cheek, man. Get out, man! <laughs> Please don't be dead. Okay, let's roll initiative. Oh, I got a six. They're hungry. They're moving fast on your position. Uh, let's have Hans, because you're still up. Five. Okay. Um, let's see here. They're drawn to the statue, so let's, uh, let's do the first three on Hans. As they dive, bo they just start to swarm, swarm you. Uh, that door, by the way... Um, at the base of the uh, marble statue does um, is open and uh, it leads to give me a second here why can't I find it all of a sudden you do see um, what appears to be some kind of ladder going down beneath the uh, I guess compound here okay so they start to swarm you three of them attack you Hans would all the smoke and the fire give them a negative well it's smoldering I mean it's not like there's tons of smoke this was shut all right uh, I know one dive bombs and basically you dodge them um, what's your armor class? It is 19 with shield. All right, yeah. You bat away another one with your shield, but another one, um, as you sort of spin around, it gets you in the back. Oh, that's not good. You take one point of damage. Just me a three or four. And then the other... Two have okay. Um, Gilbert, what is your armor class without any dexterity bonuses? Uh, my surprise would be fourteen. Okay. Although, uh, yeah, because actually, my dexterity bonus—I don't have one. It's just uh, armor. Okay. All right. So for melee. Uh, it would be 17 without a shield to be 16. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Two of them. One of them is uh, busting its nose on your armor, but two of them pierce you for six points of damage. I'm at one. Okay. And then Franz. Um, I think the next. Yeah. Two of them can't seem to be getting through your leather armor, but 
the third one gets you right in the neck for three. Your turn. Your guys' turn. What are you doing? Pop a shot with my bow. Okay, you will be firing into melee. Kind of. All right, there's going to be like an equal, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, one in four chance of hitting. Not not me, though, right? Well, that is true. Yeah. Okay. All right, so are you going to attack one of the ones on Franz, Gilbert, or Hans? Ooh, Gilbert. Okay. Roll a 1d4. If you roll a 1, you're hitting him. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's a hit. Solid. Shot. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, all right. Nice. Yeah, one of ones that's uh, engorging itself uh, pops into a like a mosquito that's filled. That just blood goes everywhere. Okay. Uh, okay, Hans, that is a miss. And Kaitha, what are you doing? Uh, let's see. Yeah, my spell's not too effective since they're all mixed in with the party members, so I'm just going to swipe at one with uh, my axe. Okay. Are you attacking the one on Gilbert, Franz, or Hans? Well, there's another one on Gilbert. I'll, I'll attack that one. <laughs> yeah, there's three each. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, that's a, that's a solid hit. Okay, it's the first time. Oh, <laughs> and of course, uh, one point of damage. All right. All right. Uh, that one is wounded, but up. Okay, and I think that's everyone. I want to try to use my movement for this turn to make my way towards the barn. Okay. Uh, let me double check something. Not to roll, uh, Franz, roll the, the initiative for, me, for the, the party there. Is it Hans, right? Oh, I said Franz, but he got a six. Nice. I rolled a one. They're getting fat from all the blood they're drinking, so they're moving really slowly. All right. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, um, with the damage you've taken, uh, Gilbert and Franz, you are awake. All right, I'm going to. There's two in me. There is uh, two. Yes, two. All right. Uh, could I take one hand each and yank them right off? Ah, uh, yeah. Why don't you make a Yeah, Matt, why don't you make an attack roll of minus two? Right. Yeah, it's just gotta, it's gotta do it. Here comes the regret. Sixteen. Okay, yeah, you're actually able to grab the two and pull them out. And now you're holding on to these two flapping... Uh, I crush them into my hands. Well, you'll be able to do that next round if you'd like. Of course. Um, and uh, Hans, you take your spear and just nab the one um, on your back. Yeah, try to stick it with a spear <laughs> in um, my back. And uh, you, hear, you hear another pop, and you just feel the blood drip, dribble down your, the back of your... Uh, uh, the, your back as you kill one. So, all right. So now we got Franz, Kaitho, and Gar left. What are you guys doing? Yeah, I'll take a shot. Bats on <laughs> Still, is it Franz? Yep. All right. I'm gonna attack one on him. Okay. I'm assuming that 
I can't use my pole arm on the one that's on me, so I'll have to draw my dagger and stab it with the dagger. Okay, that's, that's fine. I got an arrow for that one. Okay, that is not... Actually, no, that will hit, because uh, the thing isn't really moving. So go ahead, roll your damage. Oh, jeez, yeah. All right, it pops. Blood dribbles all over the place. And now we have Gar. There is... Two, two on each, right? Per, yeah, yeah. I'll take a shot at the one closest to the Hans. Okay. Roll on a one or two. Roll a d6. On a one or two, you hit Hans. Okay. Oh, jeez, yeah. Okay, roll. That's a solid Thank hit. God that wasn't at me. Oh. All right. One. Well, that one had one hit point, so another... P you skewer it. It drops from the sky. And now it's their turn. Let's check their yield morale. Ooh. I think they're still in it. Uh, interesting. Uh, actually, are, they, these, these are they intelligent <laughs> creatures? Um, they're more like animal, animal. Yeah. Would I be able to terrify them with my fey aura and chilly demeanor? If you would like to try. Yeah, yeah, I'll give that a try. Okay. Is that something I have to roll for, or does it just apply to their morale check? To... Uh, that just applies to all morale for NPCs, hirelings, everyone that can see you. Uh, and I don't know. I'm going to double check. I honestly can't remember the rule that I made up for that off the top of my head. So just give me a second. I'll look it up. All right. They will um, flap away and start heading towards, thanks to that little business that you just did, uh, they flap away and head back towards the inn. Uh, I'm going to fly a torch and throw it into the hole that they just came out of. Okay. I'm, I'll just crush the ones in my hand to a bloody pulp. Oh yeah. If you need more, if you need more than that, I can squash them together in the hands. How about uh, why don't you make a strength check because they're trying to break free? I forgot you're still holding on to those. You bet. Roll under seventeen. Yep. Oh, right. That's right. I forgot you have a seventeen. Yeah, like, he is shredded. <laughs> uh, of course, now I'm going to roll a 19, and, uh, you know, it's uh, going to be the joke where the big muscly guy can't open a pickle jar, but the little goblin doesn't, no problem. Here we go. Five. Okay. Uh, he crushes them. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, uh, you, the torch drops down. And lights up a small stone room. At, uh, and let me just get the new map out here. And uh, you wouldn't actually be able to see that door. But, but if you climb down, you'll see it. All right, how bad off? Who's wounded the worst? I don't mean to frighten you, but I'm very little bad. bad. All right, so I got a one spell for today, and that's cure my wounds. So, um, in that case, I shall take it willingly. Yeah, you, know, you do this more than I do. I just hope you know that. <laughs> Looks like you got two hit points. Heals. The blessing of the Iron God. 
bit. <laughs> yeah. Alright, he is, uh, uh, moderately more above Death's Door than directly on Death's Door. So what would you guys like to do? One more. Plus one. So it's three all together. Oh yeah, that's right. One more? Excellent. Yeah, it's 1d6 plus one. Alright, I'm halfway to life. <laughs> ah, much better. Now that you feel better, let's go get our torch and go see what's in this hole. Mm, yes. So there's and th three bats left that we that we know about. Indeed. They're back in the inn now, though, right? So. Yes. Yep. Does the uh, statue look like it has anything that will make it close uh, automatically? Uh, nothing that you see on the outside of the, sta on the statue. No, no. Can I see if I can disable the gas trap so it can never function again. Yeah, go ahead and make a tinker roll. I'm going to put us all to sleep. Three of three. All right, yeah. Uh, inside, uh, kind of like up, um, above the ladder going down, you find a panel, and uh, you see what appears to be a series of you know, when you open up the panel, you you see a series of like uh, glass uh, jars, tubes, uh, and they're all triggered at, um, like some sort of weird chemical experiment. And when the door opens, a couple grains from one jar and a couple grains from another, and some liquid from another kind of drop down, and it, you know, you surmise immediately would you know expel this gas. And there's a lot. It looks like this could be done quite a bit. So. Um, by pinching off some of these tubes and whatnot, you're able to essentially disable disable the gas trap. Is, are, are those things built in such a way that we could reverse engineer it, keep the components? Mm. I suppose you could if you want to spend some time monkeying around to, like, pull them out. Or we could just firebomb the, the dudes at the uh, omelet with it. <laughs> All at once. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll spend some time uh, seeing if I can uh, disassemble it so that it's usable later. <laughs> okay, um, so when you want to actually like pull the glass jars out and like disconnect and, and, and carry them away, right? If possible, I, I must. I mean, the, I'm after the ingredients is the primary thing, but if I can get the mechanism as well, because that has the proportions of everything that it needs. All right. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to say this is going to require some tinker rolls. I'll assist in any way I can. Oh yeah. If the goblin is uh, better at this kind of thing, then uh, then I'll help nope. him help out. <laughs> help just here for moral support. Well, um, yeah, it's like the small panel. You're gonna have to get. It's only one set of hands can really fit in there. So, um, one roll, and uh, if you roll a six, you might actually accidentally set off the trap. Just letting you know. <laughs> I think I'll. I think I'll stand over here this time <laughs> with my squirrel, who's probably still asleep. Does anybody have a, a better than one on Tinker? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give it a try then. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to say the mechanism uh, at this point um, is, uh, as you're trying to, like, pull out some of the, the ingredients, uh, the mechanism is damaged. Um, and uh, uh, we'll say the... Why don't you roll a 1d6 for me? We'll see how many how many you get. How many jars, actually? 1 to 2 would be 1... Well, I should say a d3, but yeah. Okay, so that would be... Yeah, one jar is damaged, and the uh, liquid kind of like goes everywhere, but you're able to get the other two jars. Okay. At least, at least something. 
All right. Um, uh, how big are these? Oh, you, you said they were fairly large. Uh, just looking for encumbrance purposes. Would both jars count as a single item, or would they be one item each? I want to say one item each. Or, yeah, a sing on, uh, as far as a slot. So, I don't know. Let's see. Um, I'll take one for you. Yeah, almost like a, okay. gal like a gallon milk jug size. <laughs> We'll say. All right, I'll uh, I'll go return uh, a couple uh, rations to uh, <laughs> to the wagon, and then I'll uh, actually, you know, uh, yeah, since we have the wagon here, I'm just gonna put the jar in the wagon and not worry about it. Okay. Once they get that sorted out, we'll we'll pop down to the floor below and search that room. Yeah, can I double check the, the ladder and make sure it doesn't have a trap on it, too? Sure. That's what I would do. I would electrify the ladder or make it just come apart on you. Yep, uh, roll a search. Fail. It is sturdy as dwarven craftsmanship, as far as you can tell. All right. That looks good to me, guys. All right. Hans, you go down first. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a fire job. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Gilbert, yes, going down first. I'll go second. Looks like I don't have much choice, but yeah, sword and shield, he'll go on down. All right. Yeah, you're in this uh, 20 foot by 20 foot stone room. There's a door on the right. Um, a wall there, a standard door, wooden, and the, you know, an iron bound, okay? And there is a plaque on the north wall. I will investigate the plaque. Okay. Um, it is finely crafted plaque, you know, excellent craftsmanship as, uh, as far as the, you know, work uh, done to put some writing on it. Uh, why don't you make a languages roll? <laughs> Would you like me to roll the 2d6 and see if I can get snake eyes? Yes. Yes. Hmm. I wonder what this says. I wonder, yes, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, you do not <laughs> speak uh, high verbanese. This is definitely the Something that the uh, the more educated and elite of the northern kingdoms uh, speak and write in. You will uh, step aside for Franz and Clytho to see if they can understand it. I will check it out. Okay. Remember, you can add your intelligence bonus if you got it. That's the reason why Gilbert was rolling 2d6. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Oh, hey. All right, Franz. Yeah, you're pretty fluent in my... Uh, High Verbanese, and it says, "Mark well your passage, you would-be robber. For the clever observe closely, and only the clever will win the day." But we're not clever. You're not clever. I'll inspect the plaque since they made the plaque outside. A trap. So I'll inspect this plaque to see if it's actually a trap as well. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, why don't you make an architecture roll? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's nothing weird about it. It's a plaque that's, you know, uh, pretty solidly placed into the wall. There, it's not, there's no pressure plate there. It doesn't move. There's nothing uh, abnormal about the stonework. All right, uh, look around the room and see if there's any holes in the walls or anything that's going to trigger and dump stuff on us, like a deadfall if, when we go towards that door. Okay, so you're going to basically search the... Search for large stone traps. 
on the approach to the door okay. before I check the door for traps. Um, well, uh, tapping around, you don't see anything. Ah, I inspect that door. Is it locked or is it uh, just stuck? Uh, And then I'll, I'll check the door for traps too. You know, check it for if there's any like spring-loaded things or uh, a wire or, or a pressure trap in the in the in the in the lock area to see if it would trigger something else when we open the door. Give me one second. Um, yeah, the door is not locked. And um, uh, observing, you know, the area around the door, you're not seeing anything that jumps out at you that would be, you know, trigger anything, that sort of thing. It looks like a door. What this is, is the, when we contact our doorman. What, do you, what are the rest of you doing as he's poking around, just standing there? Yeah, back corner. I mean, while he does that, I'm gonna search on the other opposite side of that door in the room. I'm gonna search the wall over there. Okay. Yeah, I'll search the uh, the south wall, uh, where near uh, where the ladder is, and uh, basically just that wall, uh, on the ladder towards <laughs> towards the door we're trying to get into. Okay, looking for like loose stones, that sort of thing. I can't uh, or for a secret panel or anything like that. Okay, um, south wall there isn't anything. You do find, however, on the west oh. wall, a secret panel um, that uh, kind of depresses in and slides over, and it opens up into a um, it's just a hidden compartment in the wall, and you see a lever. Oh, oh boy. What do you make of this, Thrones? Go check out the lever. See, the lever is just an idiot trap. Like, it's got, like, uh, a battery on it or whatever. You just pull it and you get the zap. You don't see anything like that? Don't see anything like that. Let's hook the lever and pull it then, shall we, I guess? Who's pulling the ladder? Or the lever? If we can get it with a rope or something, maybe some of y'all might want to move out of this room. <laughs> I mean, I do have the pole arm. The whole point of getting the pole arm is I can do stuff like this without being real close. So I'll hook it with the pole arm and give it I'll, a tug. I'll clamber up the ladder. <laughs> okay. Well, um, as you start to clamber up the ladder, um, I probably should have mentioned this. The door uh, had closed itself. Um, you can push the door open. But the door has, is on some kind of spring hinge, so it closes after after. It's on minutes. a timer. God damn it. <laughs> okay, so, um, but yeah, you can push I'll, the door open. I'll push it. Okay, um, and the lever is pulled. There is a click, and then nothing else. So I think that door should be ready to open now, uh, Gilbert. I already rolled a four, a two. Door opens with ease. All right. Wasn't locked. It wasn't stuck. And it opens up into a hallway that uh, is the ceilings and walls of which are lined with holes. And your torchlight takes you uh, falls upon another door similar to the one you just uh, just opened so hopefully we turn these off hopefully so we squirrel turn on. 
Yep, squirrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, there. Uh, and before you head down, like again, the the the, the flickering torchlight also lands on a. Um, let's see. That's actually ten twenty. Eh, you probably wouldn't actually get a very good until you get closer to the door. You guys heading towards the door? What we're gonna do first is take out the squirrel from the bag and kind of give it a light push so it runs down the corridor. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll a 1d6 for me? Of course. Four. Okay. Uh, the squirrel makes its way about halfway, stops, looks around, is like sniffing at some of the holes. And then just kind of moves down a little bit further, and then nothing seems to happen, though. As it just sort of like scurries around trying to find a way out. Can I check the oxen? If my head's out of the uh, hole there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Everything looks Make sure good. There's, there's no armored men trying to loot our shit. <laughs> Why don't you roll a 1d6? Might as well be cruel. You have been down here for a little while. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, roll another 1d6. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Five. Oh, wow. All right, yeah, roll another 2d6. Frickin' Frost Giant again. Frost Giant? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong campaign, dude. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. You actually do see uh, five, or I'm sorry, six armored men um, slowly making their way. Uh, Are you shitting me? Nope. Slow Disbelieve illusion. Go ahead. Sorry. No, oh, yeah, they're just making their way towards the, um, yeah, and they don't, they don't see you. They, it's no, pretty, I'll... pretty obvious they don't see you, but they're making their way up the, um, I better get this on and back up again. Oh, the road from the west? Yes. Boy. I'll put my head down and, uh, alert the party. We've got company. We'll go back up top and beat our chest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gonna show, make a show of force immediately. Okay. I think that'd be wise. Also, make sure that we're not down here coming out when they get up here so they don't see where we're at. All right, yeah. Well, they don't, like I said, they, you guys will be able to make your way up without being noticed at this point. They um, uh, are pretty intent on the uh your carts and uh but they're they're eyeballing the inn um as a potential ambush site that they might get attacked from you know what i mean so they're not even looking at the statue can i try and run south to the chapel like the little bush over there yeah you could do that um i mean and, and try not to be seen is that what you yeah 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 Gibbity scabbity. I'm a goblin. What are they gonna think? Well, you could. You, you. They'll probably see you. Okay, that's but fine. You, but you can run if you'd like. If that's what you'd like to do. Yeah, I'm just gonna go pray at the church. Okay. Do you want to approach him with that fog? Uh, I can. No. Maybe if you uh, let me go first to the uh, quote ambassador, if they try to start stuff, I can just cast that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, you, if you could, you know. Yeah, what so does I, the I, I guess I'll, do? I'll, uh, I'll wait for everybody to stay back, and then I'll, I'll approach the guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, as you approach, uh, they immediately. What do they do? Oh yeah. Uh, they draw weapons, and they. Uh, tell you to stop these your oxen 
they are ours. What is your business here? <laughs> oh, we're just uh, traveling the North Road looking for fools to rob. He smiles with the, like a nasty toothy grin. Ah, uh, yes. There are, there are many fools in these parts. Might want to, you might want to keep looking for some. I'll uh, keep approaching uh, with uh, with my hands out. Okay. All right. Um, I think my that spell has a ten foot radius from me. I think at first level. Wait, let me double check. Okay. Yeah, you do that. I'll, I'll basically I'll see how close they'll let me get. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll, they are, we'll say, basically here, and you're making your way like this, if you see my cursor, okay? Um, they will, let's see. Yeah, they uh, they they have their long swords drawn, um, and they're just kind of uh, the 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 leader uh, is looking kind of incredulous uh, at your audacity. Um, and he says, "I know the Fey uh, seem to think they rule these parts, uh, but uh, the Fey usually have a bit more." Um, what is, he kind of looks to his friends, have a little bit more ass to back up their threats. I'll lose an arrow from the bushes by the chapel. Okay. I'll charge forward swinging. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'll say you got because you guys are kind of talking. I'll let you guys kind of get the drop. So get that sh uh, bow fired and the rest of you start charging and then we'll roll initiative. Oh, all right, yeah. Zips way right by his head. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah, I'm just are... going to fire an arrow and stay hold my distance. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll see if I can close into spell range and then cast uh, Funeral Fog. Okay. Well, let's roll initiative. Um, and uh, as you guys are basically going to start charging each other, I got a two. Go for it, Kaito. All right. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> yep, you guys are going first. So you're going to cast your funeral fog. Uh, how many of them can I get with it? Well, it's a 10-foot radius. Uh, so if we're going to use our pile of dead bodies that you burned as sort of a, uh, as a measuring stick here, um, you probably be able to get all of them once you guys start uh, piling in. But uh, so it's just going to be Gilbert Kaitho going into hand to hand here, into melee. Well, I don't want to get too close. If he's casting that death ball, I'll be poking them on. Uh, you'd probably have to get into the fog to. Um... Well, I want to hang to the flank, and if any of those guys avoid the fog or try to run around, that's who I'll go after outside the. Fog. I'm sorry, say that again. I'm going to hold back a little bit, uh -huh. and any of the brigands who try to go around the fog or don't go into the fog, I will approach with the full arm. Okay. And are, are they wearing armor? Or... Yeah, leather. Leather. Okay, leather. So they're not over 16. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Alrighty. Um, 
at this point, yeah, if you're like running up and casting, you're going to catch all of them at this point. And you just hear all these startled cries like, you know, um, Gilbert, you can charge in there. Um, you will be at a minus two penalty hit because this stinks like death. But uh, damage will be, uh, well, he's first level, so you'll basically roll twice and keep the higher result if you do damage. And your target is random. Yes. And I would be just outside the fog? No, you'll be in it. So there's going to be a one in six chance. Yeah, one in six chance of hitting uh, Kaitho. I think it's worth it. No hard feelings? <laughs> so if you roll. That's all right. Lucky 21. All right, that's going to be a hit. Now roll a d6. Don't roll a one. By the way, don't think of an alligator. What's the first animal that comes into your brain? Five. Thankfully, it was not an alligator. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, roll roll your damage twice and just keep the higher result because of this uh, funeral fog here. All right, one of them takes four damage. Okay. All right, uh, you cut one down. Very good. And... Let's see here. So that would be one, two, six, so. Oh, okay. All right, that's a miss. The next one. That's a hit. Oh, rolling the wrong, wrong dice here. And uh, yeah, as is before. Well. Before it was just crazy mosquito bats getting all confused in the in the melee. Um, you hear men shrieking and crying. Um, oh wait a minute! And as they're uh, trying to figure out who to a strike. One, two, three, four. Okay, now this one's actually going to target Kaitho here, but that's going to be a miss. And then one last one. And uh, you hear you uh, in this uh, uh, smoke fog shrouded melee where all you see is just shadowy shapes swinging and attacking. Both of you are seeing men kill each other in this uh, in this fog. Um, I guess you wouldn't really know how many are left, but maybe you would. Uh, but it's the next round, so let's roll initiative. I'll tell you, there's two left. <laughs> they were basically hacking each other to pieces. It's actually a really cool spell. Um, all right, I got a five. Uh, Gar, why don't you roll initiative? One. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Franz, as you were kind of hanging back, Outside the fog, you see two men rush out, and, and they're running. So you can make a, make an attack if you'd like. Can I step in front of them and set for charge? Um, well, no, no, except this is more like I'm, I'm kind of giving an attack because you've been, like, waiting. So. Okay. Yay, seven. Okay. Yeah, they're... Uh, oh, oh, I'll take that 11 from my lucky dagger. That's, a, that's 11. So then with your plus one would be a 12. That hit. I got to double check. Sorry. I don't think so. No. Nope. Okay. And they're s scattering. They're, well, the last two, they're just heading down the road. Can I shoot one? Yes, if you'd like. I'm going to give you a minus two at this point. You give. Alright. And they are hightailing it out of here. And thus ends the combat with the random encounter of with bandits.
strip the bodies, throw yeah. the bodies on the pile. Yeah, there's, uh, like I said, there's some leather armor of moderate quality. They're each carrying a dagger, long sword, and short bow with ten, uh, uh, ten uh, arrows each. So. Uh, I'll take a dagger and a short bow. Okay. I'll nab some arrows. You said they had bows and arrows. If there's any more, I'll probably take one and just uh, uh, re uh, drop off whatever I don't need. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll just write it down. So basically, three short bows total. Three long swords. Three daggers. If you guys need those bows, take them. All right. Back right. to. Uh, before we do, Go I'll ahead. drop off my water skin and the dagger. And does the short bow come with arrows at all? Oh, uh, yeah, there's uh, 10 arrows each, so a total of 30 arrows. Okay, and how would we be carrying those around? Because I might just go with the dagger instead. Quiver? In that case, I'll leave the quiver and short bow there, too. I'll be bringing Mr. Dagger. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if we're going into the dungeon, I'm gonna, um, i probably drop off. <laughs> uh, Do we want to rest the rest of the night and then go back in the morning? Might be a good idea. Yeah, also, uh, what do you think about traveling back to town with our current stash it would be five days back i think and then five days back here so it'd be 10 days yeah we've almost been robbed twice yeah like in, in an afternoon yeah. <laughs> in an afternoon. <laughs> either we're gonna have to guard this place really good in the stables or yeah it might just be a better idea to drop off the loot and then get back I i'm thinking it might have something to do with that big plume of smoke we created. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> who let, who let it on fire? Is after us. <laughs> yeah, because that 300 gold pieces, that's 15,000 silver pieces. Yes, it is. It so is a we lot. Could, we could buy a boat? Yep, and we're probably, you're probably guaranteed to level as well. You could probably buy Hamlet. <laughs> that's 15,000 silver one gold this is why I was like Ugh, I should I, I like should have edited myself before I announced it. okay so here's what we do but we one... bury 150 gold pieces and we don't take it back in town with us oh that's so meta it's true <laughs> We only get XP for the treasure we take back to town. So if we only take half of it... That's right. We'd be able to cheat the system. At least until one of Raggy's demons uh, catches one of this and uh, pantses us for it. Yeah, we'll find a safe spot where no one's going to think to look. The outhouse. We'll hide it there. Yes! We'll hide it in the outhouse and just clean it really, really good uh, before <laughs> we uh, bring it back. So no one gets any shitty ideas about it. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> we could also we'd also set a trap and bury it in the dungeon. But if there's something down there, it could probably find the gold pieces and just take it. Um, we could uh, let's see what could we do. Uh... We could stash it back in the attic. Nobody likes this place. And there's still bugs up there. Yeah, yeah. We'll find a good hiding spot so no one gets any funny ideas. I say hide at the shooter. Yep. There's a secret room downstairs too. Yes, yeah, there's a secret room downstairs. Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, well, it's a small compartment. It's not. Oh, are you talking about the basement? The, the, the murder room. Yeah. You know what? We'll take the. Chamber. In order to the the defer, uh, pilfers, we'll decorate the uh, room with these uh, these dudes in the end. Set them in the chairs, like with empty glasses in their hands and stuff like that. Oh yeah, fresh bodies. Okay, all right, well, that'll take you some time to do here, okay. Um, and then you're going to leave 150 gold 
in the secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. You can roll if someone takes it, but make sure you know that you are rolling and that it's possible to get it back. Please and thank you. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm, no, no, this is, this is uh, you know. You're, you're doing we're well. We're doing it in case we get robbed of the 150 we're trying to take back to town. Right, right. That's right. We don't want to put our chickens in one basket. Alright. Again. Or in case we all die. We know where treasure is, right? And somebody's going to live. Well, yeah, it's true. And, um,. Respectfully, um, knowing this party, you're likely to forget you did that anyway. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't that know. is fair. Uh, if any, there's any future uh, viewers in watching this, and you got a YouTube account, make sure you type into the comments with "a hey, morons." <laughs> you, you need to level up fast at all. You left three hundred gold at the moat house. <laughs> yeah, uh, not the moat house. The uh, the statue place. Oh, you you guys did leave stuff at the Mo house too. Trust me. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we're gonna have to read the, Yeah, we're gonna have to read the, that again. Um, oh no. All right. Okay. So you're gonna leave. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Um, um just because um, we'll just kind of fast forward. So another, I'll say roughly an hour goes by as you sort of sit around planning what to do, bandaging wounds real quick, moving bodies, this, that, and the other thing, and then you're gonna. Head on out. Back. Yeah, I think we should go back to town. Okay, let me do this. And Resupply and come back. Let's see. Want to shoot a plate mail? I might have great to plate as well. Okay. And so it begins the travel south. Yeah, I think you guys are actually getting 36 miles based on your encumbrance. Uh, so that's about, what's that, four hexes actually, right? Yeah. Two, my math is correct. One, two, three, four. All right. Uh, oh, I almost forgot my new my new thing. The weather. All the weather. Damn. Yeah. You remember that part? All right. We will start because uh, I didn't roll yesterday, so we'll just start um, here. Okay. So let's let's have some fun. Uh, Hans, roll two d six as you guys start making your way the next morning. So those of you who are above uh, at fifty percent of your hit points or above can get one hit point back. Which is above? Fifty percent. Okay. All right. So it's partly cloudy. Sun's out. It's it's a nice day, summer day, and uh, now I need uh, Franz to roll a one d six for encounters. Oh, this morning before we leave, in the church, mm -hmm. I want to cast bless. And bless the church. Okay. All right. Um, we'll. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'm gonna say something happens there, but I gotta think about it. Yeah, it catches on fire. Because it was uh, a a uh, a church to a a pagan power of the borderlands, and you are blessing it with the iron iron god. So now there's an arnish presence. Okay, uh, Franz, roll a 2d6. You guys are making your way south along the road through the, the hills. Lucky number seven. Okay, roll a 1d4. Okay, and roll a 1d6. We're the king of encounters, aren't we? We're, okay. we're charismatic, therefore we attract more b subscribers. And <laughs> roll a... Well, actually, I'll do this one. Yeah, okay. Um, as you guys are... Yeah. 
making your way down. Uh, you see a deer basically get spooked by you because they can hear you guys come coming down the road with the wagons and whatnot. And uh, you just see it kind of trail off into the north, uh, north of, of the road. Um, free to give chase if you want to try to hunt it. It's up to you. Should we hunt deer? Go for it, bud. Little squirrel, should we hunt deer? <laughs> for the record, I can roll to see if I can train that thing when we get back to town. Oh, with the bushcraft roll? Uh, bushcraft or whatever uh, would be required, yeah. I, I think bushcraft would work. Um, are you going to try to chase the deer? Um, I do not see why not. I'm going to take aim with the short bow. Well, it's 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 taken off. It's yeah, I mean, if you could take a shot, if you want to take a shot at it, you can. I'm going to give it some cover though as it's going through the foliage. So, um, we'll say a total of minus 4. I got to chase after it with a sword. Okay. Uh, what is your current speed? Uh, my current speed is I think uh, explore time, uh, explore time is 60 feet. All right, so roll 1d20 plus 6, and I will okay. make my roll. It is a 1d20 plus, it's, so I got a 16. Okay, he's probably going to get away, but in the meantime, I can break the fourth wall a little bit. Deer baseball! Holy Hannah. Holy uh, cow. 20. All right. <laughs> okay, this this really is frog baseball now. Yeah. So Gilbert goes from this Adonis into this sketchy art horrific thing, screams as the sword is over his head, as charming rock music plays, and takes a swing. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. You you catch up uh, up to it really quick. I mean, it. it <laughs> we'll even say you like maybe you flanked it a little bit. I don't know. You you All just right. took off running after it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'll, you, you I'll catch it. The bonus. <laughs> uh, so go ahead, make an attack roll. All right. Uh, plus four regular or any bonuses? Your your normal normal attack okay. roll. Okay. Just ten. All right. Yeah. It uh, it bounds away from you, um, dodges the attack, and uh, it's gonna take off running in. Are you gonna continue chasing it? Deer baseball. All right, I got a seven. So oh, did I. Oh my god. <laughs> Go He's ahead. getting his venison. He is getting his fucking venison. <laughs> well, you guys have been eating like hard tack for like days yeah. now. Or mushrooms. Yeah. Crotch mushrooms. mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as if they looked unfortunate enough. They actually come from, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's not getting that deer. All right, and it's going to try to escape again. This time I rolled a 28. So I think it's going to get away. I rolled 12. I think so, too. All right. So after a few minutes, Gilbert comes out of the woods, of the north of, north of the road, a little dejected. Yes. To the deer's credit, it's probably going to be uh, a local legend to the other deer in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Um, this evening, uh, Gilbert, why don't you roll the 2d6? And Kaitho, <laughs> roll the 1d6. All right. All right. Six. Six. Okay. No encounters this evening. And six means... Ooh. Yeah. It's very warm. What happened to my cursor? There it is. Very warm, warm. It's very hot. Sweaty. Some would say sultry evening um uh, and i'm actually let's see so who's wounded and, and trying to rest well yeah in the medical cart me i have three points of damage on me ah uh, yeah i'm gonna say you can't it's just too hot uncomfortable um do i count as a the air conditioner what because you're How? winter court <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's clever but no um 
Give it a try. Uh, yep, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? <laughs> okay. Gar, next day, why don't you roll the 2d6, Hans, roll the 1d6. Okay, the day goes by uneventfully. It's still clear and warm, but not as not the scorcher it was over the evening. Uh, so it's a little bit more comfortable, um, and you're just making your way down uh, the road, and you you're basically camped there. This uh, morning I would heal um, uh, Franz. Okay, make your roll. <laughs> Two. All right. And so that was okay. Franz, roll two d six, and Gilbert rolled the one d six. Okay. For this evening. Three. All right. Evening will pass by uneventfully. Warm, clear night. Probably actually be cool if there's no cloud cover, right? Two, three, four. Following day. Uh, okay. Kaitho, yes, bless. 2d6. Gar, I need you to do a 1d6. Okay. No encounters. We are. Ooh. Which way does that go? I think this way. Hazard. Oh, man. Oh, no, wait. You can't come from that way. So I guess that would be. Well, why don't you just roll again? Cool. It remembers. If you, if you use the up arrow, it remembers your last message. I got a seven. Does that change the result? Uh, yeah, it does. It's still a nice, nice day. All right, and in the evening, let's see, whose turn is it to make Hans? Why don't you roll the uh, 1d6? I'll do the 2d6 this time. All right, seven. Oh, it's going to start rain. Light rain. Three. Okay, it's light rain. No encounter. And let's see. All right. And um, following day, it, it will clear up. And I need Gilbert to roll a 1d6 for um, encounter. Then, Are you even shocked? Oh, no. Okay. Roll a 2d6. The deer's getting his friends together, and they're going to get revenge. <laughs> Pardon me, I talked over you when I shouldn't have. Oh, that's alright. Uh, roll 2d6. Right. Okay, I figured as much. Lucky number 7. Oh my god. Okay, roll a 1d4. Ah, that's the uh, tricky one, then. Okay, and uh, let's do a uh, percentile. Well, I'll do this, actually. Okay. All right, you actually see, because uh, you're about a half day out from Hamlet, um, you see a, a shepherd and some sheep uh, kind of hanging out to uh, the east of the road towards the river. Um, you don't see the river quite yet, but um, and uh, it seems a little uh, far off. You know, like I said, like a half day's uh, travel by road from Hamlet. Um, uh, he uh, sees you coming, 
uh, and he's kind of turned south uh, as he's trying to get a couple of these sheep that he's got uh, moving a, uh, south at a quicker pace. Um, but, but he looks nervous uh, as he looks in your direction. That shepherd looked a little stressed to see us. Probably thinks we're robbing him. What should we do? Do you like sheep? Just keep our pace up. Will we catch up with him? Sheep are adorable, yes. Uh, he, he, he's on foot. So yeah, you will catch up to him. Eventually. But he's uh, looks like he's uh, trying to avoid the road and, and avoid you. We'll just keep going. Just just keep uh, herding the oxen forward. We we'll get we we'll get close to him. Just look at him. And say, "Arm bless you, child." <laughs> oh, that. Hello. Uh, when you say that, uh, a look of relief comes across his face, and and. And he's like, and you as well, sir. And uh, he kind of slows his pace uh, and, and actually asks if he can travel you, travel with you. Uh, he tells you, uh, sure. it's like, oh, some of my sheep got away from me. I've been tracking them. Thank, thank Arn, I found them. And then he just kind of, he looks at you, Gar, and uh, Kaitho uh, kind of crosses himself. And he just kind of stays clear away from the two of you. Yeah, Your I just hands. stared at him the whole time. Glaring. <laughs> All right, and you guys will make it by the end of the day here, back to Hamlet. And uh, why don't we stop there? Because uh, I know some of us are dead tired, myself included. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll calculate your XP. Minus the 150 gold you left at uh, <laughs> at the <laughs> at the inn, um, and um, you guys can figure out what you want to do with that money in between sessions. I guess um, yeah. might, might be a good idea to see if you can find those teamsters you hired. Your the prior group had hired. Um, I don't know. Do what you want. I'm not trying to tell Relax you. Relax, man. That's who I'll be talking to. And. Uh, we will go from there. Good times. Good times. Thank you for a wonderful session, and I hope to see you guys next week. Or the week after. All right, guys. Thank you.